episode 164 of Wayne and Travis Hartman. I am B-Money, the producer. That over there is the talent. Weekend Trap, a.k.a. Travis Hartman. Uh, Olympic boxing controversy as both Emane Khalif and Lin Yu Ting both win gold medals in their respective women's boxing divisions. Uh, y- you can't miss this in the news, folks. If you watch any Olympic coverage, this has definitely been one of the headlines uh, stoking the flames on both sides of political divisions and aisles and uh, medical conversations. We want to bring the facts that we have forth, we can trap specifically on the medical side, and just kind of our opinion as to what should be when it comes to uh, these two individuals boxing. But we can trap, I don't, I don't want to start talking too much. I'm going to throw it to you. Explain to the listeners and the viewers of this podcast what's going on exactly. Amain Khalif, who gets most of the headlines, but then also uh, Lin Yu Ting, who is also kind of pulled into this uh, whole situation. Toss it to you. Give us the rundown. Give us your thoughts. What's going on? First, I have to defend and let everybody know that um, Imane Khalif is not a transgender. As far as we know, she was born a woman. She's always competed against women. She's never flip-flopped on that at all. So before we get into it, I just want to make sure everybody knows that she is not a transgender. She has always been a woman. So now, going back, I'm... I wouldn't say I'm an expert on this. I'm not a medical expert. All I'm talking about is the things that they've released to us so far. And that is the IBA, which is no longer the sanctioning body. I get it, but that's all we can go by right now because the IOC has dropped the ball, in my opinion. But back up, the Talk IBA about that in a moment. Yeah. The IBA has claimed that Imane Khalif um failed a gender test, it means she has an XY chromosome. So as Emane well Khalif, as 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 well as Lin Yu Ting. So let's not yeah. forget it's two people being Both thrown into people. this. Yes. And so what happened was they are born. It's a rare condition. And like I said, I'm only talking about things that they've reported to us that we know of. So I'm, I'm not firsthand knowledge of this. I'm not. Nobody is because they don't really tell us everything. But I'm going by what they've let us know so far. And this is what I'm talking about is she was born a woman, meaning she had female genitalia, but she also had male genitalia inside, no uterus. I don't believe that she can ever have a child. Um, but with that being said, I'm defending her in the respect that she is a woman. She has always competed against women. So that's thrown out there. But also, it is 100% wrong that both of these women have competed against women and won against women. Mm-hmm. Okay? Because they have an XY chromosome. When you have an XY chromosome, from all that we know, from all the reports that they've talked about, XY means that your body develops like a man. Your bones develop like a man, which develop different than a woman. Their testosterone levels are going to be different as well because they're developing like a male inside of a female body. It is a crazy rare condition, but also super weird that we have two of them now. It's like such a rare condition to have. You've never seen it in sports, but yet we have two now, B-Money. Mm. Two. And guess what? Both won gold medals. Okay? Yeah, so uh, now, we have a main, the- a main welterweight gold medal for I- Algeria, Lin Yu Ting gold medal in the flyweight division for Taiwan. So everybody wants to tell me now, too. They're like, well, Imain, she didn't even win it all in the Tokyo Olympics in 2020. She's fought women, right? She's lost, I think it was seven times, they, they said, but she had also won like 40-something times. So- what I'm telling you is that high level women that are very, that are training only for boxing, they could beat a person like Emaine, who just because she does have all the advantages of testosterone, and all that she hadn't learned the sport yet. And as you've noticed, she's learned the sport even better and she's worked even more and she's developed muscle mass even more. She has more testosterone. She has a clear advantage based on what's being reported to us, based on what we know, she has a clear advantage and look what happens, B-Money. I believe she didn't lose a single round on the no. judges' scorecards in the Olympics. She won the gold medal 5-0. And so, and so that, there is, the other ones. that there is the question because the IBA, which we'll get to them in a second too, which they have their own sort of issues. Mm-hmm. But the IBA last year disqualified both of these fighters because of all of those things you had mentioned. Failed gender eligibility uh, from the world championships last year. The XY component. Uh, to me, that's kind of a big deal, right? It's not it, yeah. XY. I mean, that's that, yeah. that's what we, that's what we have uh, as, yeah. as, as actual men. Uh, and then we look at um, the, the appeal process too. I was doing, looking at some research here. When the IBA disqualified both of them last year. Lin Yu Ting did not appeal it. Interesting. Belief yep. did, but then withdrew the appeal. I don't know why. 
Okay. And it's mm -hmm. might be, maybe it's out there, but the, the appeal process went in and they decided to withdraw the appeal. And I scratched my head. Why? Uh, you know, so that was from last year, obviously the IOC, the, the Olympic committee decided not to utilize the IBA's, uh, um, you know, uh, regulatory sta status to run Olympic boxing for the last two Olympics now, because of all their are in their own controversy, all the ties with Russia and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's going to become a problem going forward, I think. We'll talk about that in a few moments, too. Um, so so these two individuals haven't been able to fight for a world championship because of the XY, because of the elevated testosterone, which you mentioned, you have clear advantage. Bone density, which is a lot more important than people really know. Um, the muscle creation and density as well. And just you have so much elevation with, with an elevated level of testosterone. And this is also pure for you and me. If you and I were injecting ourselves and had our testosterone levels over a thousand, you would be able to tell a difference. I'm not saying that's what they're, where theirs are because it's probably not that high. Um, mm -hmm. But with that level being so high with the XY, clear advantage. And last time I checked, when you look at the Olympics across all sports, you aren't supposed to have those advantages, whether it's which sure they don't have wrestling anymore, but if it's you know something along those lines, which is more physical intensive, not just shooting a gun or a pistol or air, air yeah, we're a combat or sport you're talking about a combat sport with those advantages, it is of my opinion, they should not have been allowed to compete whatsoever at all. That is well, my opinion. Here's the biggest problem I have, and I'm getting down to the super technical stuff of this. The IOC, in my opinion, have failed. Emane Khalif have failed the other um, uh, competitors as well. And this is why. Be money. We, we've talked about this in the history of the world right now. We're in a really weird place of transitioning. Uh, speaking of transitioning, but transitioning because how do you define a woman? How do you define who gets to compete in women's sports? Okay. Mm, we have yeah. to define that now. And that's the thing. And that's where I have nothing against Iman Khalif. It seems like she has this crazy rare disorder. I get it. I have compassion for that as her as a person, but I'm talking about strictly as a sport, the IOC, their only requirement B money was what's your birth certificate say? What's your passport say? Yeah. So what I, what I say, this is all messed up is because mark my words, B money in four years when we have another Olympics. And if boxing is in the Olympics, you are going to see a country budge or lie on a birth certificate and a passport and say they have a fighter who is a woman that's going to be actually a man who whatever transition whatever it was because the ioc did not require any kind of testing okay we have to define what a male and a woman is if we have two different sports we have to have some kind of definition and that's all i'm saying ioc needs to be able to define what a woman and what a man is and how you do that is i think simple biology X, Y, and X, X. And I'm sorry. You have to do that test. We're in, sure we're in a weird time, and I understand that part of it. Um, but men's sports versus women's sports has been divided in one of those camps since the beginning of time. You can't tell For me all of a sudden. obvious reasons. You can't tell me all of a sudden the last 10, 20, 30 years, all of a sudden something's magically changed where now all of a sudden we have this weird gray area. I'm sorry, we don't. We don't. No, and no. what's going to end up happening, and we joke about this. I mean, I make comments about WNBA stuff all the time. Yeah. I make I make comments about the movie from back 20 years ago called Joanna Man. You know, all these things. Yeah. If we if we had male competitors in women's sports, people would actually watch them more because they'd be more competitive and more fun to entertaining to watch. But this is this is it actually coming out in true to life form. It was rather disgusting to watch the dismantling of Olympians, women Olympians, true yeah. XX women Olympians in the boxing ring. It wasn't even, it, they weren't even contests. And so what well, someone will push back on on this in our conversation, if they comment below or anywhere else, what they will push back on is, well, what about when they're actually fighting in the normal ranks outside of the Olympics? How come no one has a problem then? And I guarantee people have a problem then. It's a, This is a world stage. And it's a lot different here than if they're traveling around or just competing, you know, on the you know professional ranks. And like you mentioned, a main has a 40, 40 wins or something crazy like that. Yeah. Um, we're not going to talk about it because it just kind of gets brushed under the rug. We've talked about how uh, some dudes who decided to become women and fight in MMA have nearly killed people in a cage. That should yeah. be evidence enough. 
I don't care if that's not what's happening here on the boxing side, but it's close enough. We can trap. It's close enough for me. Um, you lost me when the there's X, Y versus X, X, you lost me there. And, and you just mentioned that that should be kind of the, to us, the line and in the sand. Just, yep. Hey. Yeah. And listen, I, I want people to direct the hate accordingly though here. And like I said, I don't, I genuinely don't believe Emane Khalif was doing this to have an advantage. She's following what they're allowing her to do. They allow her to compete in women's division. She, by all means, it's a weird disorder, whatever, is a woman. And she's like, well, I, I, that's who I'm supposed to compete against women. And because of the IOC not having certain rules in place, she's actually not breaking any rules. And that's why I don't think it's her fault, B-Money. I know that she has an advantage, but they're, she's only fought women. And they're still letting her only fight women. The IOC I'm talking about because the IBA clearly has not let her do that anymore. But they, the, the IOC needs to set some rules, set some grounds. Again, I, I talk about this and, and the, we're not going to be political, but it is kind of political. How do you define a woman, B-Money? And the IOC has a very good, a very important and pivotal job ahead of them going into the next Olympics because it's clear that these two women who uh, have XY chromosomes beat everybody. Well, so can't tell have, me there's not an advantage. I'm not taking away their hard work because they probably worked their butts off. Of course they setting, did. The, the IOC is setting a dangerous precedence, not necessarily with boxing, but it's going to spill out into other sports if they're not careful here. Uh, because like you mentioned several minutes ago, it seems that the only qualifier, if I read it correctly as I was doing my research, is that they were born and raised as women. Mm-hmm. That can't be the only qualifier. It can't Birth be. Birth certificate and a passport. That's all the IOC goes by. And, I, and I'm not claiming Algeria or Taiwan did this. So don't don't bite my head off here, folks. Yeah, yeah, but what yeah. I'm saying, saying is that, that you could easily get some one of these other scrupulous sort of countries forging or, or messing around with official documentation just to get that clear cut advantage, just to get on yep. the podium. That's a dangerous precedence that the IOC is playing with. And yep. the IBA, I get it why they weren't, they haven't been brought to the party the last two Olympics, but I guarantee none of these other regulatory bodies want anything to do with it. They're not going to yep. touch this. And so here we are, here we are looking at LA in four years, uh, the, the Olympics being in LA and so far no boxing. No boxing. And you know what? You know what, too? Here's the whole reason. Go back. Let's just, everybody be really simple-minded here and go back. Why did they create women's and men's sports in the first place, B-Money? Because women weren't competing against men because the men were beating them. So yeah. we did two different divisions to allow women to compete in sports. But this is the dangerous president that I think the IOC is, is doing. And this is, for me, my wife was a professional tennis player. I'm a big advocate for women's sports because they knew they they deserve an avenue to compete against their own kind, 100%. their own species, their own gender, their own women, right? Because and it's entertaining. In tennis, it's e it's easily entertaining to watch too. But 100%. it's them against them and us against us. And I say us the, as you and me as as X Y X Oh X Y. <laughs> yeah. I said X X. But X Y. But listen, that's what I'm trying to say is they're they're setting a dangerous president of totally doing away with women's and men's sports because if it gets this complicated they're just gonna say you know what the best fights the best and whoever qualifies qualifies and you know what's gonna happen a man khalif is not gonna beat a man in a boxing match she will never be on a podium if they do away with the women's and men's divisions and they just have one division and it's called boxing in the olympics that's it okay yeah. and that's where they're they're creeping along that lines and i hope people know that like just because i came out i'm like i think it's wrong that a man competes against women i also believe that women deserve their own division and so do men so sure. they need to clarify that because if they don't they're about to do away with women's sports and i want to hear about the feminists if, if you're a true feminist you have to defend this because if you're a true feminist you want women's equal rights women's equal rights is i'm going to compete against a woman well that men that rights, whole segment against a man. that whole segment of the demographic has been very quiet to this whole thing because they're not really quite sure who they want to fight for in this yeah. situation i think they just want to it becomes a political thing then. They just want to ruffle usually the right's feathers about it and uh, take sides that way. But it's been very, very, very quiet. Um, I was talking uh, to somebody on Saturday at my boxing gym um, as after we worked out. We were talking about this whole thing, you know, jokes aside and whatever else. You know what? The IOC, they were very brilliant with this whole thing by allowing it to happen because you want to know why we can trav? 
Talking about it. Talking about it. Engagement. Social media was on fire. People watched. How many people watch Olympic boxing when it's on TV versus Olympic gymnastics, basketball, anything? Even, but even go further, how many people watch women's, women's boxing even so more? The, the IOC, brilliant in their decision making process to basically have no rules other than yeah. being born and raised and let it be marred in controversy, allow people to talk about it. We're talking about it here on episode 164 of Wayne and Travis Hartman podcast, but also at the same time, let the engagement just set the internet on fire and we do exactly yeah. what we do with every other issue. Right run now it, in 2024, we run with it and we hate each other and it's you or this or you're that. And it's yeah. all spite and vitriol. IOC, kudos to you. Very, very brilliant because that did generate more ratings than probably women's boxing in the Olympics has ever received. Ever. Yeah. Or, or, I mean, it could have had the opposite effect. People be like, you know what? Screw this. We'll talk about it, but we're not going to watch it. So uh, I, I'm can't. curious to see the ratings, but I... Listen, the IOC, you're not, you're, you're hundred percent right. The IOC used Emane Khalif as a puppet and they're stringing her along. They're like, oh yeah, we want you to do that. We're, yeah, we're here. But really they left her out to dry B money. They, they, they purposely left people misinformed about what she, what was going on. They purposely didn't release very much information. They purposely let Amin Khalif take on everything because people at first were calling her transgender. I seen people that I know well off, even Logan Paul, he retracted one of his statements um, because he thought he was a transgender. Most of us did. We were like transgenders beating up on women. Amin Khalif's not a transgender. She no. actually was born a woman. And this is the only reason I defended is because I remember um, in swimming, Leah Thomas competed against men, got her butt kicked, but then transitioned over no, to that, a woman that and then dude. started beating women. No, 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 so no, no. That's that wrong. one, Leah Thomas or whatever the hell his yeah. name is, that's a dude. Okay. Yes. That's and that's what I'm saying. Straight up dude. Um, he has, that's where Mane Cliff didn't he, do this. He's in the swimming water. He has a rudder. Uh, yeah. sticking through his, uh, his tights. That's a dude, man. And um, I love how. People tried to call this like a, I seen some people on, on social media, this is how uninformed people are on both sides, but people were just like LGBT rights. And I was like, you guys don't, a man Khalif is not gay. So it's She's actually a not woman in any of that. Yeah. At all. She, she is a person and that's it. She doesn't see, claim all that. See, we all just got so fired up and I texted to the, the little boxing chat about everything. Cause I, I didn't really watch any of this stuff because I was still pissed off about the opening ceremonies. And I still am. Be money. I didn't either. I watched um, the one thing I watched the Olympics was boxing men, but you get, get and this, we'll talk about that. Cause you know, this, I'm a massive track and field guy. I was a track and field coach for well over a decade. I, I coached state title, you know, kids, all sorts of stuff. Um, and it pained me not to see a lot of these amazing races that I heard about secondhand, but I, I kind of I dug my heels in and I, you know, I made a decision. But that being said, uh, you look at this and it's like, man, what do we go from here? Where do we go four years from now? Um, unless someone steps in, IOC is not going to do this again. They're not going to do this with boxing again because it, they just the doors are way wide open now. I mean, yeah. now you're going to get any any freak uh, out there that that potentially could just skirt under the radar saying I was female i got the official docs for it and i and i'm caught like mike tyson uh in, in this i mean f initially uh former gold medalist clarissa shields was very pissed off and adamant Vocal. about saying the Mary. same stuff they all went silent too. michaela mayor they all went silent because i don't i just don't think anyone knows what to say anymore like are we, we're just not surprised at this point we're just not surprised it's it, everything's just kind of I want to I want to refrain from my political rhetoric, but everything is just where are we going? We can trap. What, what's going it's on? It's a little bit bizarre world, man. Let's get back to like, I don't like this new normal that we're going on where people are just it's not picking normal. and choosing it's not normal. what they want to be, what they want to do. There are rules in place. And there needs to be rules in place. We need to follow rules. And I'm an athlete. And I like that. Okay. I'm a boxer. There's rules. Every time I step into the boxing ring, there's certain things I can and can't do. Right. And that's how it should be. There are certain guidelines or certain rules, and that's in life, be money, right? There are certain guidelines we all have to follow. And I don't think these guidelines are being followed. I think that because of weird ideologies, people are backing this abnormalities of stuff well, that's going on. Well, listen, both- uh, Let's listen, keep it simple. I think you're right. Both of these, uh, uh, Emane and Lynn, I, I hate to just refer to them as Lynn because I don't know if that's like a first name or last name, but Emane Khalif and Lynn Yuting- 
they followed their camp's advice, which was, hey, they're allowing it, so might as well, right? They've I been think that was the ultimately career. what it is. They had to qualify to get there. They had to still win. And they're, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I don't discredit them. Like, I mean, Khalif put the work in. Like, clearly she's pretty good at what she does, but she's also fighting other women who don't have the same advantages she was born with. And you're not exactly, especially on the Olympic ranks, you're not exactly getting the best in the world uh, because Olympic boxing is not the same as professional boxing, the system, the point system, so, and how, how things are scored. Yes, so you're not and Olympic get boxing the, is not pro. No, you're not getting you're not getting the the top cats, the top ladies, uh, going into the the Olympics to to fight. Hey, maybe you will. Now I don't know, but it's not worth them and their the potential career and winnings to to have a screw up there. So I don't know. We can travel. I mean, the Olympic what a mess. Olymp Olympic boxing used to be only amateurs were allowed right. to compete. And a couple of Olympics ago, they made a new rule, which I thought was stupid too, that pros can now compete, but you don't really see very many do it or have so success at it to? because it's a different, it's like, it's like training be money. You're a track guy. The Olympics for, for boxing is a sprint. Professionals are training for marathons. Correct. So it doesn't really coincide with what they want to do. So that's why you don't see too many high level pros. Like you don't see Floyd Mayweather going and trying to fight in the Olympics. Okay. Although he probably would well, win. He could. Now. It's just, mean, he could. He, yeah. and, but he could, but none of them have tried it yet. Manny Pacquiao talked about doing it, but he didn't do it either. None of them are doing it. So back those to some be, brighter actually, news. Actually, that, that might save it, dude. I'm, yeah. I'm telling you, you get some of those guys, some of those guys beyond the could, legends tour. They could point box. They could point. You box. talked about this B money. Yeah. The that would be the tour. legends. Tour, Maybe the legends tour is in boxing now, but imagine, for Olympics. Yeah. imagine if they did that, that would be, that's, Okay, IOC, if you if you are potentially hearing us in your algorithm, that's how you fix it. Convince some of these guys that are, you know, the former stars. Hell, get Oscar back. He could win another one. He's too busy. And who knows? I mean, he he dances around in a little bikini too. It, he might be in both divisions, both sides. <laughs> Speaking of all that, that's a good transition because did you not see we, we what can't Edgar Berlanga? We can't say that word anymore. But did can you we? see what Edgar? That's a good. Word? That's a good segue, is what we can. Oh. Travis trying to say. <laughs> it's a good segue beyond the Olympic topic, uh, <laughs> which boxing in the Olympics is in jeopardy. But let's segue, <laughs> not transition. We can't say the word if you're recording. Go ahead and record it. I see. I see you pulling your phone up. Go ahead and record it. I did, it. but I can't okay. hear you on mine. Okay. Well. Because I have headphones. The segue of Weekend Trav, we're going to talk now. Edgar Berlanga bringing up uh, some of Oscar De La Hoya's more colorful past, uh, which. Flamboyant past. Flamboyant past, which he doesn't care anymore. He's, you know. It's out has, there. It's has, enough, out there. has enough money in Coke to, he doesn't care. <laughs> so I'll, I'll throw it to you. This is, this has been an interesting couple of weeks um to watch this stuff unfold in the olympics but let's talk actually yes let's segue into uh the canelo the berlanga the de la hoya the turkey a la sheik uh yeah, all I this right. stuff what a weird what a weird time for boxing isn't it yeah i mean this is what happens though when, when a sport kind of like starts evolving gets pretty big and our, people don't realize that that boxing is actually it's be money it's it's back to being huge it's back to being in the spotlight again it's back to being talked about on all platforms and all streams and all television networks it is but because of the guys like jake paul now because of the olympics the all that craziness going on because of uh oscar de hoya this new saudi arabia guy turkish al sheik there's a lot of just everything swirling and what i was bringing up was berlanga tweeted some or tweet or i don't know what he did, posted some stuff about de la hoya in a fishnet stockings which by the way guys those are true they're real pictures. photos from how they're long ago photos. was that, like 30 years ago or something gosh it's been like 20 or so we're all getting old but back to boxing and the real stuff is um there were some fights over the weekend virgil ortiz fought great fight they're trying to turkish alashik is trying to talk about setting up either canelo and crawford or canelo and uh or ortiz or um or crawford and virgil ortiz uh, to fight next and that's a bad matchup Crawford murders um Virgil Ortiz and ends that whole talk I think well as it stands Canelo Crawford's off it, it sounds to me according to some of the posts on X as well as other sources that Turkey al Sheik is done messing with Canelo um he doesn't want to do anything to do have anything to do with how they do business and, and him as well as I saw um 
Tim Zhu, his camp was kind of thrown into a different comment. Al Sheik doesn't want to deal with them anymore either. They don't know. Uh, that's interesting stuff. So it seems to me Al Sheik really loves Mexican boxers and he really loves Crawford. Um, and so I think he's just trying to set up maybe it's Virgil Ortiz, maybe it's Sebastian Fundora, which we mentioned last week. Um, and he's going to ride that as, as far as he can. It's, I, recently this past weekend was the first time in ever really that I've actually seen some negative comments posted on social media about the Saudi Arabian, uh, money man, um, basically saying, ah, I don't know what the, the general feel, the, the, the general population comment is positive for him, but I've started to see some cracks in the armor of he needs, he needs to just kind of stay in his lane because, you know, he's, he's, he, he doesn't really know what he's dealing with on the boxing side and actually making it worse. I don't necessarily agree with that because he has the check, but I am concerned when you fast forward weekend, Trav, and this is the conspiracy theorist uh, on my seat is what's the end game here. What's the end game for Riyadh season? What's the end game here? I mean, he is, he's the chairman of the uh, general entertainment authority for Saudi Arabia. He has uh, basically a blank checkbook, but what's mm -hmm. the end game? It's, it can't be just for the pure entertainment of the world because what do they get out of it? I, no. I mean, last we checked, and I don't know if you saw this report, it looks like they may have lost 10 million bucks on the Crawford fight. Yeah. Um, so what's the what's the end game weekend show? What do you think? Well, listen, I know what they're doing, B-Money. This is like marketing 101. They're flooding the market with a bunch of money. I, I guarantee you that he's lost a ton of money in all those fights, mm. okay? They're buying sports right now. They're trying to get sports. Turkish al is trying to be the head of boxing, kind of like Dana White's the head of the UFC. Turkish al trying mm. to do that. So I think that's their end game is that he also wants to get all that under one umbrella. That way he can start making money and start making all the big fights and start being loss. the guy in control. Lead loss. Yes, yeah, so okay. that's... That's and that's what he's doing, and I, I I understand that's that's pretty much marketing 101. That's he's flooding the market. He's trying to buy these guys. He's trying to buy sports. He's overpaying. And if anybody knows, the PBC did the same thing. Al Heyman was overpaying fighters at the very beginning. He had this like 500 million dollar investment from Waddell and Reed, and he was just blowing through it, trying to get us out there, getting free fights. Like I think uh, Keith Thurman was fighting on regular NBC, which hadn't uh -huh. happened in years, and he was overpaying him to fight on regular NBC where they weren't making money. They're flooding the market, and look how that worked out for PBC. Not very well, B-Money, because now they're kind of almost defunct. Their Turkish al Sheik's kind of saving them a little bit with some of their fighters. But long story short is I don't – I think Turkish al Sheik in this uh, feud with Canelo, I think it's going to work out, B-Money. I think that it started out, and Turkish al Sheik thought he could buy Canelo, and Canelo's like, nah, man. My legacy said, I got a ton of money. You're not buying me. I'm not bending the knee. And that's yeah. what Canelo is doing. And he's right. But I do think after this fight, money will talk. Canelo's, dude, Canelo is, all he's doing is negotiating. And what Please. we don't realize is he's negotiating. He said he wanted $200 million, or $250 million to fight Benavidez, $150 to fight Crawford. And Oscar De La Hoya, I got to push back a little bit on Oscar De La Hoya. He did a podcast and it was just like, clearly Canelo is outpricing himself because 200 million dollars is a joke but then that guy just got done saying that floyd mayweather made 280 million dollars when he fought conor mcgregor so why can't canelo ask for 200 million dollars he's a cash cow he yeah. i don't think that i don't in my opinion i don't think canelo is ducking david benavidez because he wanted 200 million dollars i think canelo is a prize fighter i think canelo is like pay me the money and i'll fight anybody because he always has he's he's probably the only boxer on the planet that doesn't have to bend the knee uh, exactly to Al right. Sheik. Exactly um, right. He's so in a I, very good position. Al Sheik doesn't like it. And that's part of negotiating. That's part of the sport. That's part of the power struggle that's going on. But guess what? Yeah. It doesn't matter because somebody, if you don't know your worth, somebody will tell you your worth and you won't sure. like it. That's and true. I like Canelo because of that. There you go. There you go. So I don't know what's going to be next here. I mean, there's some some speculation. As you mentioned, the Virgil Ortiz did fight last night. Uh, won a, a, I don't know, in my eyes, a questionable decision victory. It was um, close. It was close. I watched it. I don't think it was fighter of the year, by the way. People talking about that. I don't think it was fighter of the year. I After I watched it, um, the only thing I'll say, it was exciting. It was very exciting because uh, Virgil Ortiz had knocked out every single fighter that he fought up to that point. Yeah. Every single fighter, 20-something and 0 with 20-something knockouts, he'd knocked them all out. But the cool part about that B-Money is we talked about it off the air was they did something that I've never, ever seen in boxing. Yeah. In the first round of that fight, Virgil Ortiz went down mm -hmm. and the referee ruled it a slip. 
about the fourth or fifth round comes around and the referee had went back and told them to look at the replay. They looked at the replay and they overturned that. And they actually said it was a knockdown and they scored it a knockdown for, um, I forget the guy's name, but who he was fighting, who Virgil Chi was fighting, Boa Huck or Boa Chuck, I believe was his name. But anyway, they gave him a knockdown. It was the right call, to be fair. He, he did go down from a punch. It was the right call. But I've never seen that in my history of boxing is they overturned a decision mid-fight. That's pretty cool. I actually think that we should utilize that more. However, it did have a weird pause in like the fourth the fourth end of the fifth round where they stopped the fighters for like 20, 30 seconds while the referee was going and talking and making the decision. And then he informed the coaches what had happened. And then they resumed the fight. That was weird. They need to fix that. But I'm not against that decision because we do have instant replay. Let's get the shit right. Yeah, it's it's weird. As every sport out there, every major sport has embraced some sort of an instant replay. There are growing pains. You see it with soccer, with the VAR. You see it with football. Whenever they start to implement new things, it slows the the play the rate of play, yeah. and that's that's the problem. Baseball, uh, some of the changes they made actually sped up rate of play, which was good. But <clears throat> I, there's a lot of things I think uh, on the officiating and scoring side that definitely need correction. I don't know if AI comes into the debate here at some point on it how does. it could how it could help fix scoring and boxing and get some of these these uh you know scrupulous sort of judges out of here. I mean, we we hate watching these fights and you see these scorecards. You're like, what in the world? Like, yeah, no way, no way. Yeah, and that's not just that's the like corruption. yeah, the corruption involved uh, from top to bottom through a lot of these organizations and the officiating and, and and the regulatory bodies it's just sickening and that's what always is going to kind of turn people off from this sport any any other sport that's you any know, sport yeah like gymnastics same same kind of deal um i don't there know there was a little bit of a controversy there they came back and took a bronze medal away i don't know the yeah. whole story of that but i, I know, know they either. took a bronze medal away but you would know also tennis has gone to this. And I only know this because my wife sure. is a performance tennis player, but tennis has gone to this where they've taken away line judges completely. And some of the grand slams and they have something called Hawkeye to where immediately it already, there's a, there's a, it's a diagram. There's a computer yeah. thing. If it goes out and they have the camera set up at a certain place. And when it goes out, it's automatically called there's quicker no, though. Now it's so it's so, right away. So because of the speed, it doesn't really affect the rate of play. So I don't know. They, like they at all. And they've taken out. away the live. They've. I used to think that um, I, I kind of liked the errors live because that was just part of the sport. But now I'm getting a little bit older. And I'm like, you know what? If we can do better and get it right, why not do it? So I'm okay with that. As long as it doesn't disrupt the flow, the natural flow and play, I'm okay with that. But boxing yeah, right now, it, it disrupted it though. Yeah, because how many times you you watch these old clips, old sports, and they barely had any like like – TV coverage and stuff like that. And, you're, and and there's always like a question about like this, this game changing play that changed the, the landscape for this, this Super Bowl or this, this and that. And because they didn't have the technology and the resources we do now. And, and yeah. the old heads are like, no, keep it the same. And I'm like, well, I kind of like kind of making it fair and getting the, the human error out of it. And that yeah, should I be the I kind of like case. the correction. I like the but, truth of it all. But it can't take forever either. That's I. That's what I, I love. You know me. I love professional football. I love the NFL. I love watching it. Yeah, uh, but what I hate – oh, yeah, we, hey, dude, don't get me started. Or or get me started. We'll <laughs> talk about it. Um, but what I hate is when you're looking at these, like, these penalties and then they're underneath the hood of the camera forever. And we're watching it at home. We see five different camera angles. We're like, no, it's very clear. It's right there. Yeah, yeah. And it takes yeah. them forever – to come up to the decision. And sometimes it's still not like overturned or it's still not the right call. We're like, are you nuts? We're seeing five different camera angles and you're not seeing it. Um, so and putting that and injecting that into the boxing world is a bit tougher. There's a little, that's uh, kind of a different sort of sport for that. I just don't know how the future looks. Maybe we yeah. don't have three judges anymore. Maybe it's all a damn robot. Um, who knows? I mean, dude, we're, we're, we are, we're approaching a lot of, different aspects of boxing because if you want to get super technical be money one day down the road i can see something like the technology of putting sensors in the gloves every time the gloves land and put a sensor on the person's body somehow every time a punch lands you score that as a point that way we don't need any judges it's points whoever lands the most blows against the other guy and doesn't get hit as much wins the fight i well, can see something like that 20 years down the road well let's because take of ai Let's take a different sort of IOC boxing controversy. Local local hometown product, Amari Jones, 
who we think in the bronze medal match won, and he did not. And one of the judges' scorecards is split. ridiculous. Ridiculous yeah. out of favor for him. And, and so maybe the point system like that, you know, sensors in the gloves, or I don't know, maybe that's that's coming. Because I know I know viewers are just sick and tired of it. It's, we're, that's, that's the one knock that boxing continues to have, and that's the judges, Dying. the officiating. It's just corrupt, man. It's just corrupt. It's because um, it's very opinionated. Yeah. It's a very opinionated sport, meaning like a judge – can base his wins and loss or his, his whoever wins the round based on his opinion on ring generalship, not necessarily punches landed, but also he made the guy avoid some punches. He, he controlled it. He was aggressive or he wasn't whatever. There's a lot of different aspects of judging. Judging boxing matches is very confusing when you try to um, tell a person how they judge boxing matches. Have you ever tried to explain to somebody how they judge boxing matches? It's very hard because yeah, it's, it's hard. not, a, it's like basketball. It's like, if you make the most points, you win. Football, if you score the most points, you win, right? Yeah. Boxing is not necessarily if you land the most punches. It's not necessarily that because there's been fights where it was, let's just say it was dead even on punches landed. Then a judge is going to score it on ring generalship, on sure. a, effective aggression, on maybe some of the punches were more effective. So like boxing is always going to be that way because of the scoring system, because it is sort of Don't opinionated. You- it's hard to, to to nail it down to some exact thing. But with that, don't you think the first standard should be volume of connection? Don't you? And, and I don't know. Don't you think that should be at least like priority over the rest, over like the ring generalship and this and that? Shouldn't it start with actual connectivity? Yes and no. I'll say yes and no because the Olympic boxing sucks. When I watched that, that was a sucky match to watch well, sure, with Mario Jones because taps that suck. guy was exactly right, B-Money. So if you just did that, guys would do that. Little taps, little taps. And then once they get and they know they're ahead on the scorecards, then they're going to run the rest of the yeah. fight, which makes it non-pleasing for the boxers. I don't like Olympic boxing right now. When I watch, I, the only match in the entire Olympics that I watched was Amari Jones because he's from right here in Orlando. Good yeah. for him. 21 years old, got a bronze medal. I loved it. But- yeah. When I watched that fight, Amari Jones is a better fighter. The kid that he fought knew how to play the system. He'd been a world champion already before. I think he won the world. He won the gold medal in the world championships anyway, like two years prior. So the guy knew knows how to win on that scenario. But I think if those two fought in the pros, be money, I think Amari Jones wins that fight hands down because in the amateur, that guy learned the. It's like the Cubans. The Cubans always um, win gold medals in the Olympics because they've learned how to how to. To manipulate that system but and they then, keep trying to change it and they still figure it out but then on the pros how do they do they exactly right they so far disappear. the cubans um will contend but how many great cuban professional boxers do you know mm. could you name off the top of your head you're asking the wrong guy but yeah no so I far and there's there's not any that you could name that are greats in pro boxing okay right. Because for whatever, well, mainly too, also, Felix Savon was a heavyweight. He won like three or four uh, gold medals for Cuba and never defected over to the U.S. because it was communist and that he couldn't defect, right? So he right. never turned pro, but he only fought amateur. He could have been, maybe, nobody ever knows, because Felix Savon never came to America, never, never turned pro because they paid him a ton of money to stay amateur and to win like multiple different gold titles, gold titles, gold medals in the Olympics for Cuba. But long story short is am- the, 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 the system in the Olympics – I don't like it. The IOC has a lot of work to do, which tells me, B-Money, they have all these controversies that they're probably just going to do without it. And these guys are just going to turn pro. Yeah. yeah. Well, there you have it. Um, that's that's our rundown of uh, what you saw in the Olympics. Uh, the, obviously, the con- controversy surrounding Amain Khalif and Lin Yu Ting, both gold medalists there, uh, Maine winning the welterweight gold medal for Algeria in the women's welterweight division and Lin Yu Ting uh, for Taiwan winning the gold medal in the women's flyweight division of their XX or XY or not. Uh, it is what it is, folks. And that's where we're at. And who knows what uh, the future holds in the 28 Olympics here in L.A., if we have boxing or we don't, maybe Alashik will create his own governing board and run that thing in four years. We never know. Uh, and it'll just be an extension of Riyadh season four years from now in L.A. We'll see. Um, we can try final thoughts, please. Final thoughts is about Turkish Alashik. We didn't talk about it, but the funny thing about Turkish Alashik and the Canelo Alvarez um, relationship is Canelo Alvarez's fight in September – 
that's on the same day that he's fighting Berlanga, the very same day they are doing a UFC fight at the Las Vegas Sphere. It is yep. the first combat fight that's been there. And guess who is the backer at the Sphere with the UFC? It's Turkish al -Ashik. So I think he has some some financial things going on right now with Canelo. That's why their negotiations aren't going smooth because I think he's trying to purposely, um, I don't know, man, take away Canelo's ratings and all of that because Canelo's like, you know what? I fight in May and September. I always say this on the show. The biggest fights happen May and September. They do. Canelo Alvarez always fights on Cinco de Mayo. Floyd Mayweather, before Canelo Alvarez was Canelo Alvarez, Floyd Mayweather always fought on Cinco de Mayo. It was his time. He always fought in September in big fights. But the biggest fights were always in Cinco de Mayo in May. Crawford or Canelo only fights in May and September. Now, Turkish al Sheik knows that. He purposely is backing a UFC card by Dana White that Canelo is going up against Berlanga, which is not the fight everybody wants to see. So I think you're going to see the ratings down. And I think that's how Turkish al wins his negotiation with Canelo is when yeah. those ratings are low. I think Canelo comes back to the table and is like, instead of 200 million, I'll take 150 million. And I think Turkish al is probably, that's his end game, be money right there. It's a negotiating. And I think that's what happens. A lot of commas we can travel. It's a lot, a lot of dollar signs. Uh, <clears throat> All right. Well, there you have it, folks. If you have yet to subscribe to our content uh, on YouTube, on Rumble, uh, the audio stuff, whether it's iHeartRadio, if it's on Spotify, we found out earlier this week it's on TuneIn. In my Tesla, I searched Wayne in with Travis Hartman. Yeah, that's right. I have a Tesla. I searched it and I found it and it was there on TuneIn Radio. Wherever you're getting uh, iTunes, we're out there on the audio side, but the visual, if you want to see our beautiful mugs, Go to YouTube, and I think Rumble probably gets that feed as well. Uh, we appreciate the support. Please continue to subscribe. And if you are not yet doing it, click it, because that helps the metrics for us and helps us to provide more and more content uh, as, as we can. Also on Instagram, follow us, Wayne in with Travis Hartman, all one word. And uh, the, uh, the ticket doc? TikTok, that's how you spell it. But it's all one word instead of, you know, you'll find it. Um, <clears throat> we can travel. That's it. Episode 164 in the books. And I'm just going to have to say it that that there is the talent we can travel. That there is B Money, aka producer, aka the man, the myth, the legend, the man that makes this podcast go round. God bless. God bless.